Hello, people of the internet. I am making this video just so that everyone can be more at ease and understand exactly what's going on with the demo changes on the 7.1.5 BTR. Now, I've made a couple spreadsheets and they're all throughout the Discord and everything, so I'll include all the links below in the description so you can always check that out if you want. However, we're going to start off here with a tentative gearing schedule, at least, for my own character, uh, for Nighthold. So, this first sheet starts off with a disclaimer that just says that these sheets are simply representing what I believe will be the best in slot, pre and post that changes from the December 5th PTR build. Now, of course, these are no way final, complete, or at the end all be all of what gear we're going to go for a Nighthold, but it should be pretty close depending on what legendaries you actually have. Now, the second thing to note is that trinkets that are on these sheets are my own speculation of what'll be best, and it's using legendaries, again, that I currently have on live servers because it's meant to be illustrating my personal gearing path. So this is, may not be your path, but this is gonna be my personal gearing path. So as mentioned in the sheets as well, there's a little disclaimer next to the stat weight saying that they're not final, and that's just because they're using simulated balance stats uh, for an average eye level of 901 before the secondary stat changes. So there's no way definitive. Don't use these stat weights really for anything. They're just kind of there for me uh, to change later on. Now, the next thing to note is that the artifact that it's showing is using a weapon on eye level 917 instead of 927, which is what it should be in Mythic, uh, with three of the relics at Mythic level. And this is just because of the stat changes. I can't see what a 927 eye level artifact would actually have stat-wise on the PTR versus a 917, which is what I have on live. So that's the lot. And the last thing to keep in mind is that uh, the four pieces of tier that I'm using may not be what you use, and it may not be what I even end up using depending on the Arcway and uh, the Quarter Star set to see exactly where the breakpoint is in terms of eye level. So um, this is just the tentative, again, tentative Nighthold gearing path that I'm gonna be taking. The only thing that I'm really going to touch on here is the uh, sheet focusing on the gear you can obtain in P the current PTR build, which is as of December 5th. So this is the current gear that I'm going to be going after as far as uh, Nighthold gear. So this is the, the helm is from Arcway and the shoulders are from Corsars. And then you can just see all the different items here. My current legendaries are Sindori Spite and the Wilfred's Ring which kind of gives you an idea of like where the total stats are going to line up or anything. This is also assuming that there's no Titan Forge or sockets on any gear except for the Wilfreds. And the Wilfred is using the 200 inch gem because that's technically our best gem, the single best gem. We can only use one of it. So it doesn't even include extra haste on the ring itself because of that. Um, average eye level 901. Artifact weapon is 917. You can see the uh, relics on the side here as well. We, there's two Infernal Furnace relics and one Sunridge Prowess products that we're going to be end up using. So that's kind of where you're mostly going to be looking for in terms of gear. And again, the, the last thing I'm just going to touch on real quick on this sheet is that the Erratic Metronome and Faramir's Forbidden Grimoire are just my own guess as to what's going to be our best, just based on the effects and the stats on the trinkets. Uh, so that's everything I'm going to touch on here for this first sheet. And then close that off. The next sheet here that I have open is showing the difference for the Falkiel's consumption uh, calculator that I currently have out. This is the PTR version, just showing the differences between 35% synergy versus 25% using the helm uh, and the stacks you have with the helm, anything, anything towards that effect. So just to give you an idea here, the sh current seat sheet is set up with uh, Grimoire synergy in mind, so there's no Grimoire service uh, Falkard being used here at all. Uh, this is the standard single target spec and currently my stats are all lined up or entered into the sheet here so i have stamina rating here rolling power i'm assuming that it's going to be up when i'm using Thalkiel's consumption uh, if a thousand versatility i don't have any extra summer power relics so with everything all, all in a all taken into account here sorry uh, my brain is dying uh, without the helm buff here my current Thalkiel's consumption with my primary Falkard, two Dreadstalkers, ten Wild Imps, and one Doom Guard out. That assumes that I will have a Falkild, Falkild hit, not a crit, just a hit, of 920,485. So that gives you a good idea of where it is currently. Now in my current gear, if I were to add Bracers and Synergy, 
um, at 35%, just to give you an idea, it would hit for 1,000 or 1,615,451 or two. And with a 25% nerf, that goes down by about 120,000. So you can see it here. It goes down to 1,495,788 damage. So that gives you an idea of the difference between Thalkil's consumption. It's about 120k thousand, 120k thousand, 120,000 damage uh, from 35% to 25%. So it's not really that huge of a deal for Thalkil's. And it kind of is the same throughout the across the board. Thalkius is really like our biggest hitting ability, right? So that's the the best metric I can I can think of to use, really. So obviously everything else is going to be affected, but it's not really going to be like a huge margin or anything like that. Um, so that's the first thing to note. You can play around with the helm buff a little bit here, so you can just like see just for giggles. You can put it at 250 percent, which is max stacks. That's 50. Uh, you can say you have rallying cry as your DPS cooldown because the, apparently guilds do that. They actually don't. Uh, but if you have Thalk kills plus 250% on the helm, plus synergy at or 25%, we'll talk about current build, plus the Bracer buff, you're looking at a Thalk kills hit. This is not crit in mind, just a hit of 6.2 million, which is pretty hefty. Like, it's it's fairly considerable. Like, considerable. like uh, I'm not going to shy away from that at all. The other thing to keep in mind here average we're probably gonna have around 115 percent on our helm buff if you end up getting it uh so this is the numbers you can look at here uh for the 115 percent that's what it averages out to in a curtain in a fight so it could be a few different uh, little funny things that can go on with this helm if you need to like save stacks to burst down a priority ad that spawns in x seconds you can hold it off and then unleash the full power of tkc with the 250% so there's a few things that you can play around with here in terms of the helm um, which I, I'll get into later on here as well so just a couple things to keep in mind here about that and the last thing here that I am going to uh, show you guys here is the public access sheets that I have out for everyone uh, so these are the sheets that I have as public anyone can look at them and view them so that you can do anything that you like someone already changed that so I'll just fix that here and change the color back uh, so this first sheet here is just showing stat difference, pure stat difference between 7.1 and 7.15. So you can see here the secondary stat differences. Everything basically went up by 50 except for versatility, which went up by 75. Um, and then you just enter in the stats in the first little row here, the first column of, uh, of yellow cells, and it just automatically translated here. So it shows you if you're a gnome or goblin, human, worgen, belf, uh, and everything else. Just to give you an idea. So it shows it for all specs, it shows it for all races, so you're all covered. So that's just a demonstration on that. The next slot is um, my current gear showing the differences between my current gear and what gear I'm going to be using on PTR or when 715 comes out. So you can see here, this is my current gear, the top part, and I have 34.23% haste, 19% crit, 33% mastery, and 2.38% versatility. When I go over to PTR and change everything here, the only thing I'm really changing on the PTR is I'm putting on um, a crafted neck and I'm putting on a crafted ring uh, and, and putting two extra blitter on that. So that puts that up to 865 from 855. So putting on the items that I'm actually gonna use, the actual stat difference, and this is including the stat, like secondary stat changes. I actually gain a little bit of haste. I gain a little bit of crit. I lose a lot of mastery, which is totally fine, because it's not really like my most desired stat. And you lose a very little bit of, of versatility. So overall, using the right items that I'm going to be using come 715, I actually end up gaining the stats that I like and losing the stats that I don't really care that much about. The other thing to note is the you gain a lot of spell power. So this last column here is spell power, and you also gain a, a fair amount of int. So you're gaining about... 500 or yeah 400 in 500 in almost and you're gaining almost how much that's like 700 spell power so it's nothing to be like mad about like the secondary set changes are actually in your favor assuming you have like the crafted gear available to you or things about that nature like other high uh, dual stat items uh, the thing to note here is that franz actually loses a lot of value it only ends up being around 1900 total haste that includes uh, uh the enchant and the socket so it's not like super amazing anymore but it's definitely not something that is like totally off the board it's not something that's totally terrible um so that's the current differences between 
live and what I'm going to be using in 715. And then the next tab here is using the exact same gear. So if I just kept on the exact same gear and didn't change a single thing, there you do see a little bit of a loss here between all the stats that everything loses, but it's not even that much of a loss. Like you're not really going to notice that much of a difference. The thing, the thing to notice here is that if you have high haste, like for example, Monscape on Discord, he always boasts that he has 50% haste and it's the best thing ever. Um, but for him even, you only lose like 4.72% haste. So he goes from 50% haste to 45, like 46% haste, which is really not even that bad. Like you're still like very, very well off, even at high, 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 high haste values. So there's not really too much to, to really complain about in terms of the secondary stat changes. So those are just a couple things to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind here uh, is that if we go over to our PTR here, uh, you can see just a few things here. First off, let's go to Ray Talents. So Synergy is at 25%. Grimmer of Service, obviously, it comes into contention here, actually. So Grimmer of Supremacy is still really bad. Uh, probably wouldn't use it ever, just period. So it's really going to be between uh, Synergy and Service. Um, the difference here is that on this current build, uh, all of your primary pets, that includes Felguard, Succubus, Voidwalker, Felhunter, Imp, those pets got buffed by 20%, so they do an additional 25, or not 25%, sorry, 20% damage. So every every primary pet, and this includes the pet that is summoned by Grimmer of Service. So it actually is considerable, like it's a considerable buff to this to this talent, which is not something to be mad about whatsoever, even with the Grimmer of Synergy nerf. Um, so. Really, this this ta talent here comes down to comes down to these two talents, Grimmer Synergy and Service. It'll kind of flush out. It'll probably even out about equal, I would imagine, depending on the scenario. So, not something that uh, you should really be concerned about. Another thing to take notice of is the impending Doom change. Obviously, uh, Doom d deals damage three seconds faster, and it summons a one wild imp when it deals damage. So let's change from live. Uh, now, if we just go over and spec that. What it used to have is calculate the haste after, uh, after your, or sorry, calculate the minus three seconds after haste. Uh, now I believe it calculates it uh, before haste. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below because I'm not 100% certain. I didn't double check this beforehand. I just read something really, really quickly in the Discord, but I believe it's still like that. Uh, we can actually find out specifically here. Let's just take off all our gear. Hooray. I should have thought about this beforehand. That's okay. All right, so I'm fully naked. I have 1% haste, and it is at 16.8. Uh, now, Doom is 20 seconds base duration, uh, so that just means that it calculated the haste first, which would put it at 19.8, 20%, or 20% haste, and I have 1%, so minus 0.2. Uh, so that would be 19.8 minus 3. It's just a flat three seconds, so it's calculated after your haste now, instead of before, which made it a lot better. Um, so that's the last thing to keep in mind, uh, or about that talent in particular. And the final thing to think about here is our tier set. So our tier set, let's just put on all that tier set. First off, I don't think looks horrible, but it definitely looks kind of ugly, so... That's my own personal opinion on that. Uh, the set bonuses here, Doom has a 50% chance to generate an additional Soul Shard, so we really click on that 2 set here. It is okay, it's definitely not going to be horrible by any means. However, uh, in AoE situations, it's definitely going to be a little bit uh, a little bit annoying. You're going to be overcapping your shards quite often with that. And the other thing to note is that with this tier, or the two piece, is you have to really pay attention to your Doom Shards timer so that you don't overcap uh, your shards again. So you're really sitting at three shards quite often as opposed to four shards. Um, or if you are at four shards, you have to be paying attention to your Doom Shards counter so that you don't uh, overcap your shards. And the four set Dread Sockers last an additional four seconds, uh, so four seconds longer. Which just basically means that instead of there being downtime on your Dreadstalkers, it's a 15 second cooldown and they last for 16 seconds. So the cast time uh, plus that extra duration basically just means that they're going to be up for like 95% of the time instead of uh, instead of having that lapse in Dreadstalkers. It just makes casting Dreadstalkers even more important, which is something that I've always tried to reinforce. 
so those are basically everything that I wanted to quickly touch on for this video. It ended up being a little longer than I wanted to, so I'm just going to end it here. Um, keep looking out for other videos, and if you want to get in contact with me, I'm always on Discord. You can always hit me up there. Uh, you can find me on MMO Champion. You can find me on my stream randomly whenever I stream. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.